I am super excited to be here this morning uh, to talk to you about what I think is the single most important issue uh, for our community today. And so um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about adverse childhood experiences, which is trauma in childhood, talk about trauma-informed care, talk about the connection between all of those things to um, health, which is what got me interested in this in the first place, um, but also to just you know, long-term outcomes for children, adolescents, and adults. Adverse childhood experiences. So there has been a lot of research on ACEs, what they are, and I am old school. So some of you who may have heard that there are 16 different types of ACEs are gonna be like, wait, there's supposed to be 16. The research is most compelling around these 10. And so I am going to talk to you about these 10 things. Um, ACEs fall into two basic categories. On one hand, you've got abuse and neglect. And whether it's um, physical, emotional, or sexual abuse, or uh, neglect, that's half of the equation. And unfortunately, what people tend to assume is that that's the entire equation. But there's another half that we call household dysfunction. And those are experiences um, that children have in their homes if, for example, there is substance misuse in the home, if there is a parent who's been incarcerated, uh, if there's divorce, if there's domestic violence. Um, so all of those things make up the other half of the equation. Put them all together, and those are our 10 ACEs. So let's look at what we mean when we start asking people questions about their experiences with early childhood trauma or adverse childhood experiences. And so you can see um, from this slide the, the questions that people uh, answer when they're determining what their ACE score is. Now, at this point in my presentation, I like to pause and recognize that this is gonna be a little uncomfortable for about a third of us, right? Because I'm gonna show you all of the different questions associated with determining what your adverse childhood experience or your ACE score is, and you're gonna start, start counting and you're gonna have what I call a holy cow moment because you're gonna realize that you have a pretty high score and that's okay. This presentation is gonna leave you feeling good. That doesn't mean that there's not gonna be a little bit of a roller coaster ride on our way to get there and it's okay. Um, but I just, I, I want you to kind of sit with that for a minute and be okay with that. So when you think about the questions to determine the ACE score, hear exactly what those questions are. Um, so, and, and I have another slide that talks about the research around this, but um, for the purposes of a lot of the research associated with what we know, this is retrospective. So these are questionnaires given to adults who are answering it as they think about their childhood. Um, there's another um, use for an ACE screening tool that can be done with parents of children, and we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. So, um, did a parent or other adult in your household swear at you, insult you, put you down, humiliate you, or made you feel like maybe they might hurt you? So that, if, if there's a yes to any of that, that's a one. And then you go through each of those um, questions. So here's the first four. Um, but you can get the, the, the theme, right? Did anyone in your household, um, did you feel that no one in your family loved you or thought you were important or special? Um, here's the next set of questions. Um, did you feel like you didn't have enough to eat? 
uh, or that you had to wear dirty clothes or that you didn't have anybody to protect you. And so this is a more nuanced way at getting at, so for example, y'all know, when um, children are living in households with parents who are addicted to substances, this is often an outcome or a result of that. And so these questions get at um, the, the more nuanced areas associated with that. So uh, when adults are going through this ACE screening, they go through it and they answer all of those questions. If they answer yes, to any of the questions answered for each of the numbers, they give themselves one, one point. And you can get a score of anywhere from zero to 10. And so basically, um, if you do the math and you add up your score, you'll get your A score of zero to 10. Um, and when you look at the original study that was done around ACEs, you can see that what they found was um, the vast majority of people in the United States had at least one ACE. And that over 12% had four or more, had a score of four or more. And this is important when I start showing you some of the connections between your ACE score and later outcomes in life. I will tell you that um, I, I love to give this talk, I give it when, when it's a good week, I give it twice a week. Um, and one of my favorite audiences to talk to are early childcare providers. Um, and when I have enough time as part of the presentation, I will give everybody in the audience um, the ACE test and let them fill it out as part of the presentation. And they don't put their name on it or anything like that, but then they, they turn it all in and Magical fairies go to the back of the room and they count up the scores for everybody. And at the end of the presentation, I will let them know how the room's ACE scores compare to um, this general population study. And without fail, so you can see about 12% have four or more ACEs. Without fail, in our early child care providers, it's 33%. Yeah, and I think that that's really telling for us as a community that people who've experienced um, difficult childhoods are motivated to work with children to help them have better childhoods. Um, so the motivation is great and um, many of them have gone through the process to heal from their trauma, but some of them haven't. And so that's why I like to give this presentation especially to them so that they can think about what their childhood um, did for the development of their brain, what these kids' childhoods are doing for the development of their brains. But um, the other thing is yesterday I was doing a, an interview about uh, ACEs and the interviewer was like, well, those people shouldn't be working with children. And I was like, no, 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 you're missing the point. When people who've experienced childhood trauma grow up, heal from that trauma, and are able to work with those kids, they have the best set of skills to help those kids do well. Additionally, their childhood experiences have left them with an incredible gut an incredible ability to read the room, to understand what's going on around them, to react to needs that most of us are just oblivious to. And so it makes them absolutely the perfect folks to work with kids. So if you went through and you did your ACE score and you're like, oh no, I've got a four, it's okay. You are absolutely in the right place. The thing I do want to point out about this study is um, this was a study done by Kaiser Permanente, which is a health insurance provider, um, which means that every single person who completed this uh, survey was solidly middle class, employed, and had health insurance. Uh, not exactly representative of the general population, but still it was mind-blowing for researchers at the time to even see this level of uh, trauma in childhood. So why do we care about ACEs? 
We care about ACEs because ACEs cause toxic stress. And here I want to differentiate between three basic types of stress that kids experience. So the first kind of stress is what I call good stress or positive stress. Um, and that's, uh, let's say you're in second grade and you have a spelling test tomorrow and you're studying for that spelling test and you've studied really, really hard and you're confident that you know how to spell all those words and you go to school in the morning and you sit down to take the spelling test and your heart's beating a little bit faster and your palms are a little bit sweaty and you're nervous that you're gonna make a mistake because you really studied super hard and you wanna do well. That's a stressful situation for a second grader, but it's good stress. That's the kind of stress we want our kids to experience. Um, then there's what they call tolerable stress or just bad stress. An example of that would be the first time um, a young child experiences the death of a loved one. So the, his grandfather passes away, and this isn't anything he's ever experienced before. This is a very stressful situation for that young child. However, in those types of situations, typically there are adults in that child's life who can help him understand that what he's feeling is normal and what to expect next. There are traditions in the community that show the child that there are a lot of other people who are sad too, and they're showing that and that that's okay. And so there are a lot of things in our community that help children deal with the death of grandpa in a way that is healthy and a learning experience for them on how to deal with bad stress. Toxic stress, on the other hand, has two characteristics. One, it's capricious. So these kids don't know when this bad thing is going to happen. They just know from experience that it has happened a number of times before. And two, there isn't an adult in that child's life to help mitigate or explain that stress. So if you look at the example of domestic violence, right? So if, um, if there's domestic, vi domestic violence in the household and um, dad is beating mom, that's a stressful situation for that child. He can't ask dad why he's beating mom because he's afraid of dad. He can't ask mom why dad is beating her because he can tell that she's very embarrassed, she's very upset about it, and he doesn't want to make her feel worse. So he starts to internalize that stress and doesn't have anybody to help him process that. That's what we're talking about with toxic stress. 